Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. The Lord is so good to us. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody tell the Lord's presence is here today? I'm so thankful that God is with us. We're so blessed today to have his presence. We don't deserve him. We never want to take his presence for granted. We don't deserve the Lord to be with us. After all we've done, after the thoughts we've thought, we're just blessed to be in his presence. What a joy and privilege it is for God to care about us and still move in this place after what we've done wrong and mistakes we've made. God is so good to us. And that's why I want to serve him the rest of my life. He's worthy of everything I've got to endure or go through. Anybody agree with that? He's worthy of everything I've got to fight, everything I've got to put up with. Never going to quit or back up or give up on God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can go back to your seats. We're going to go to 1 Kings 19 today. I'm glad that you're all here. And you can remain standing for just a few moments as we go to the Word. 1 Kings 19, 1 Kings 19 and 9. We're going to talk today about how to hear hear from God. That's not my title, but that is my subject. How to hear from God. How to know that God is speaking to us. Anybody else want to know that God is speaking to you? Anybody else need a word from the Lord every day? Every day you need direction from God. I want to know the Lord's voice. I want to get better at hearing from God's voice. I have a friend of mine that said, I want to hear God's voice every day. Personally, I want to hear God's voice every day. It's not so strange. In fact, the entire Bible tells us that God wants to talk to people. It's not so strange. It's not so far out of an idea that God would talk to us. And so that's what I felt today to tell you. 1 Kings 19 and 9, let's look at the story of Elijah when he was in trouble. A man of God needed to hear from God. Even the man of God had a hard time, and he was going through a storm, and God had to teach him a lesson that I think God wants to show us today. 1 Kings 19 and 9, let all the, ba- let all the babies say amen. Thank you. Well, they were already doing it. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in the place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? This is not, this is not like you. He was going through a tough time, Elijah, the man of God. Verse 10, so he said, I've been very zealous and passionate for the Lord God of hosts. Speaking to God in third person, it's kind of hard to talk to God directly like that. It's like, Lord, you know I've been good to the Lord. <laughs> it's kind of how we pray sometimes. And uh, he said, I've been really faithful. I've been zealous. I've been passionate for you, O God. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. The people you've called me to help and take care of, they've torn down your altars. They've killed your prophets. These people that we're supposed to be serving, they're supposed to serve you. They've killed the prophets with the sword. I'm in, I'm in trouble. I alone am left. From his perspective, he tells God, it's just me all by myself. I'm alone. The whole world's against me. I know you probably felt like that before too. And not only am I alone, but they're looking to kill me. They want to take me out. And I'm scared. And I might be your man, but I'm scared. And you might have called me for a purpose, but I'm worried because it looks bad. Looks like, well, I might lose this one, God. Verse 11, then he said, go out, stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks to pieces. The wind broke the rocks on the mountain before the Lord. But look, the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, and the Lord was not in the earthquake. God is manifesting his power, his movement, but he's not there. That was not enough. The wind, the earthquake, the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was even a fire that came and consumed. But the Lord was not even in the fire. And after the fire, finally, there came A still, small voice. 
So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave, for he knew that God was speaking. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Asked him again. He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. He repeats himself and says, These people have have done horrible things, forsaken your covenant, tore down the altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they're going to try to kill me. He repeats himself. The Lord is moving. The Lord is speaking to him. Verse 15, then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Haziel as king over Syria. There's a solution right there in that small voice. There was the solution right there. It was that easy. This is all he had to figure out and things will begin to change. Just like that. It's not hard winning. Sometimes it's just hard hearing what to do. Our God is not weak. Our God can fix any problem you have. But the hardest part about it is just hearing his voice. If I could just hear his voice... I can fix anything attacking me right now. Anything coming against us right now. I just need to hear the voice of God. God has a solution for my problem. I just need to find out what it is. And everything's going to be okay. The answer to the solution was, there's a king. I'm going to have you anoint. It's going to fix everything. It will fix everything. Now look at verse 18. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, the false god, and every mouth that has not kissed him. You said you were the only one. You don't know. If we can't hear from God, we're in big trouble, y'all. We don't know where to go. We don't know what the truth is. We think we're alone. We think that there's nobody else serving God. We think we're going to die. But if you could hear from God, he will tell you you're not going to die and you're not alone. You're not going to die. You're not alone. We just need to hear from God. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Today, my my title is How to Hear from a Big God. How to Hear from a Big God. You can be seated. We're so glad you're here. How to Hear from a Big God. How many of you will agree with me today and say that, yes, our God is a big God? He's a big God. There is no doubt in my mind, D.C., that our God is a big God. Kind of like you are a big, you're a big man. Our God's a big God. Our God can do anything. He can do anything, and there's no doubt about it. A big word that we use sometimes to describe the all-powerful God is he is omnipotent. If there was anything that our God could not do, he would not be God. He wouldn't be God. You've got to resolve in your mind that our God is so big and so great and so powerful that he can do anything at any time. There's nothing that can stop our God. This is the part of God that we as Christian people love to celebrate the most. We love to shout and to sing about the omnipotent God who can do anything perform any miracle, heal anybody, anytime, anywhere, nothing can stop him. He can open up doors where there are no doors. He's a God that can do anything. And this is the part that we use to celebrate God the most. But it's also the part that confuses us the most. It's the part of God that we don't understand. Because when I tell you that God can do anything, what's the very next thing you ask? Then why won't he? That's the truth, right? Can we be honest today? You see, I was raised my whole life going to church that had a lot of belief in God's power. And and they taught me from a young age, God can do anything. But as I got a little older, I began to ask God some questions. And here were my questions. So why won't you? Why won't you then, God? If you're so big, where are you? If you're so big and strong and powerful, then where, where, do something. You cannot tell me that God is powerful without creating a little confusion. I get a little bit confused when you tell me that God can heal 
everybody in the whole world by snapping his finger, and yet there's so many today that are sick and hurting. Just before service, I heard about men trying to pick out their back brace this morning. And we color coordinate those things now. Because we're hurting, we've got pain, we've got issues, and we have a big God, and yet we go through life, and we, we don't understand why God doesn't just do everything for us if he's so big. We celebrate the power of God when we're in need of it, or right after we just witnessed it, we shout and we rejoice, but the rest of the time, we're wondering why he not, has not done it yet. We're, we're sometimes like an emotional roller coaster because we're like, God, where are you? Where are you? And then God does it like, there you were the whole time, God. I knew you'd come through. And then next week, where are you, God? And then God does it. I knew God was going to do it. I knew it. I knew it. We look like emotional messes. And we, we ask God for a year where he's at. And then he comes through and we shout about it. We have a testimony. And then we do it again. It, it creates a bipolar Christian, this power of God revelation. He's so big, where's he at? He's so big, where's he at? Sunday, he's so big. Monday, where's he at? And it's the part about God that, that creates such confusion in us, messes with our thinking all the time. But let me help you hopefully understand more about God. God is not just all-powerful, but the Bible also declares that our God is also all-knowing. This is the part that we don't celebrate. This is the part that doesn't get any, he doesn't get any credit for. We get confused about the omnipotence of God because we dismiss the omniscience of God. God knows everything. Everybody say Everything. He knows everything that has been. He knows everything that will be. Our God knows every single thing there is to know. Not only is our God all-powerful, our God knows everything. God always consults his knowledge before God uses his power, and we'd be wise to do the same. Before you ever use your power on anybody, you better ask God for knowledge. Before you ever use your ability on anybody for anything, you better make sure you consult the knowledge and wisdom of God. It doesn't matter what we can do. If we don't know what to do, we've got to hear from God. We're addicted to the power of God when we should be wanting the voice of God because without the voice of God, you don't need the power of God. We're hurt, we're confused because we believe in a powerful God and we wonder where he's at. But Lord, help us. If we could ever just hear from him, it would create such peace that his power alone cannot give to us. We need to hear from God. You see, God knows everything. He knows what's best for us. Did you know that? Some of y'all don't like that when I said that. Takes you back to your childhood when your parents said, be quiet, I know what's best for you. Some of y'all just said it last week. You know, as parents, we tell our kids that. We know what's best for you, but then God says it to us, we get mad. He's our heavenly father. God knows what's best for us. God could give us candy just to show up inside of our kitchen. You could go in there and open the door and just be candy the rest of your life. God could do it. God's got all power, but God knows what's best for us. God is all powerful. God could do it. But God won't because God knows what's best for you. God knows if he gave us all that candy, he'd have to give us a dentist. He'd have to give us a whole lot more. Our God is not just powerful. Our God is knowledgeable. He knows what we're going to even do before we do it. This trips some people out. People are like, oh, yeah, did God know to do that? We try to do stuff to trick God, you know. Oh, yeah, God, well, I wasn't, think, I wasn't planning on doing that until right now. Did you know I was going to do that? God knows everything that we're going to do before we even do it. Some people get so tripped out by this, they, they say stuff like this. Well, if God knows if I'm going to go to heaven or hell, then why, why, why does it matter? Do I even have free will anymore? 
All right, so let me answer that question because that's a big one that people get confused about. It, I know if I leave $1,000 cash on the front curb of my house, it's going to be gone. Is he a prophet? This man of God speaketh the truth today. The Lord is with him. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to predict some things. But just because I know someone's going to take the money doesn't mean I made them take it. Oh, oh, that's right. I feel like saying, oh, oh, that's right. Think about it. Some of y'all need to join in D.C. here today, you know. Just be like, oh, if you don't know I'm preaching good, listen to him, all right. Every five minutes you'll find out I said something good. And even sometimes it's not so good. He's just happy to be here. Look, it doesn't mean because they're going to take that money. It doesn't mean I want them to. Neither does it mean I'm forcing them to take it. There's a massive difference in your freedom to choose and God's ability to know. Just because God has foreknowledge does not mean he's going to make us do it. That, That Our minds explode because we can't even imagine having foreknowledge and it not affecting our decisions because we're the worst at knowing things about people and using it against them but isn't it so cool that our God can know what we're going to do and still love us (sighs) for a while we were yet sinners Christ died for us I'm so thankful that my God knows everybody who's not going to listen, and yet he still extends mercy and still extends grace. He sees the devil worshipers never walking in the church house, and yet he says, I died for you. And I do it again and again and again. You don't have to know me or love me for me to love you. Yes, our God knows everything. And that's, that's where it gets so deep because our God also knows what we will never do. He doesn't just know what we will do. He knows what we won't do. He knows there are things that we will never do. Like he knows that people will never serve him, yet he still loves them. Would you do that? If you were like on a date with somebody and you read their minds, and you could hear her say in her minds, I'm just here for the steak. You're ugly. I don't want you. Smile, smile, smile. Thanks for the free meal. I'm never marrying you. You gross me out. Would you stay? Check, please. In fact, split ticket. (laughs) Split Split ticket. Because you and I are not holy enough to know what's about to happen and not let it affect us. But only our God could love us so much that he can know how we'll treat him and still extend us love. Only our God is the God that knows everything and yet still wants to save us. That's the God I'm praising today. That's the God I'm worshiping today. I'm worshiping a God that knows everything I'm about to do, and yet he still chooses to dwell among us, to walk among us, to be in my presence. He knows I might fail him, yet he still calls me. He looks at Peter and says, before the night is over, you will deny me three times, yet I will still love you anyway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So don't ever again be confused by the knowledge of God, the foreknowledge of God. Don't let it, don't let it trip you out that God knows everything about you. Let it, let it bless you. It, it helps me to know that God knows everything I'm about to do. It lets me know that God really loves me. Nobody else would love me if they knew I was going to betray him. No one else would treat me that good. You know, that's the spirit of God. To, to see something bad about to happen and still prepare to love. Wow. 
I feel like someone's about to go down in my life. I feel like someone's about to attack me. I'm preparing now to fight back. No, I'm not. I'm preparing now to love them. That's the nature of God, y'all. Now, the Lord showed me something. The Lord showed me that you're not for me. So what you going to do about it? Love them anyway. The foreknowledge of God does not change our nature. The foreknowledge of the Holy Ghost does not change how we treat people. You can know someone's about to attack you and still love them through the attack because it should never have a bearing on how we react. We are consistent. We are rock solid. We are anchors in love. It doesn't matter what God shows us. We're still solid. Help us, God, to be those people. What God knows does not change who God is. His omniscience does not affect his nature, but it does affect ours, even though it shouldn't. Our God is all-powerful. Our God is all-knowing. And God is even everywhere at once. He is omnipresent. He's a big God. Does anybody believe it today? He's a big God. He's a big God, but there's something else you need to know about God. He has a small voice. Now, when I was growing up, I'll have to use some worldly references because I was kind of worldly. Big, muscular people in my life typically had big voices. I was raised in a time when this guy named Arnold Schwarzenegger was a popular public figure. And when he would talk, it was strong and muscular and powerful. It's pretty good. We had a TV in every room. I was raised by not the best examples. And this big muscular figure who's now like y'all's great grandpa to some of these youth. It's so weird to see him old now. He's like, hi, I'm Arnold. Get my cane. I'm just like, you're supposed to be. Everybody gets old. Hey. Sylvester Stallone. Hey, Adrian. Hey. Where's Adrian? He's out in the foyer right now. You know, I'm used to growing up watching these larger than life muscular men have a deep, strong, bellowing voice. I can't remember one serious action star that walked out with pure muscle with all these weapons being like, what's up, guys? Time to throw down. I can't, um, I can't even remember one moment where I watched someone with a big, strong, powerful voice or body walk out with a little tiny voice. Because you would think that the bigger the muscle and the bigger the power, the bigger the voice. Am I the only one that thinks that? So this is why it's a little strange when you find out that Elijah was not getting this big, bellowing, strong, megaphone voice from God, because that would be a lot easier to hear. But God is not moving in these big, loud things. He's a big God, but he wants to use a small voice. Now, now, God could use a big voice. He can do anything. But he also knows everything. And there's a reason why God uses a small voice. In our text, let's go there. Elijah the prophet, the man of God, is running because the evil queen Jezebel has promised to hunt him down and kill him. He ends up in a wilderness he is actually hoping now to die, which is strange because he was just crying to God about dying. It wasn't necessarily the death he was afraid of. He was actually confused. Confused. Because Jezebel was God's enemy and she had a mighty army at her disposal. Elijah was supposed to be God's man, God's servant. He was supposed to be faithful. And he was alone. If God is so powerful, why is she allowed to chase me and try to kill me? Yeah. We've all been there. 
We've, maybe you're here right now. Maybe today that's what you're saying. If God is so powerful, then God, where are you? If you're supposed to be on my side, then where are you? You know what will hurt you worse than evil? Confusion. I know how to fight evil. <laughs> I'm going to come up against some evil in here. I can Jesus name some evil. I can throw some blood of Jesus on some evil. I can fast my evil. I can get evil. But you know what hurts me the most? Confusion. Jezebel is not the problem, not the worst problem. Jezebel can be defeated. But you know what's really hard sometimes? Wondering what God's up to. I can handle Jezebel being against me, but I can't handle God being against me. I feel the Lord talking to someone right now. You have no problem with Jezebel. You have no problem with the darkness. You wonder where the light's at. Jesus' name. You wonder where the voice of God is. You see the darkness coming around you. You believe your God can do anything. You believe your God can defeat anybody. No army can stand against your God, and yet your God is quiet. And this is what hurts us the most as Christians. It's not a loud devil, but a quiet God. Because he, the devil, appears as a roaring lion. He's got a big voice. But he's got no power. But our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Our God is the one with the teeth and the power. Our God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. This really is who our God is. And this is the part that frustrates us because we don't know what he's up to. Nothing will make you suicidal like wondering where God is at. Nothing will make you question everything like wondering what God is doing. Nothing will challenge you more than wondering where God is up to in your storm. Maybe you can't relate to this, but I can. I understand what it's like to think you're called of God and you have a big God and yet to be sitting here going, but what are you up to? Why am I facing this? Why am I dealing with this? God, I thought I was on your side. I thought we were partnered up. I thought we were in covenant. How come it's happening this way, God? If you're so big, then why don't you do something? And nothing will create a suicidal spirit like someone who doesn't know where their God's at. And this is what he's going through. He said, I'd rather just die. I'd rather die than be a fraud. I'd rather die than be a man of God with no God. I'd rather die than to live this life and not have an open channel between me and you. The only hope for confusion is communication. And that's exactly what God is trying to do here in this broken moment. This is why an angel gives him some kind of superfood, the Bible says, super water, and tells him, keep on going. That one meal gave him the energy to go 40 days to Mount Horeb. Elijah finds a cave. He spends the night in the cave. This is where our text is at. This is where God decides to go ahead and deal with Elijah in the midst of the dark cave, all alone. You hear that? In the midst of a dark cave, all alone, God begins to have a conversation with him. Where it's nice and quiet. He says, why are you here? Notice how Elijah immediately begins to defend why he ran. He says, Lord, I've done a lot for you. Everybody else has turned on you. I'm the only one left that's really righteous and holy. I'm the only one in the church serving you the right way. Everybody else is. I'm the only one in my family. I'm the only one in the whole world. God, I'm the only one that prays. Everybody else is just wrong. Having a pity party. Everybody's wrong with me. When you, when you don't hear from God, it's amazing how you just think crazy stuff. When you're running for your life, it's amazing how you just think crazy stuff. Everybody's wrong. The whole world's messed up. It's just me that's doing things right, God. Elijah is telling a God that can do anything. We are losing God. You're supposed to be the powerful God. We should be winning, God. But notice what God says back to him. He says, get out of this cave. Stand on the mountain. Before God moves, he's got to get you out 
of your comfort zone. He's got to get you vulnerable. He's got to get you exposed. So God calls him out of his security blanket into vulnerability to stand there alone before God. And suddenly, God moves like a wind so strong it breaks the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. After that, God shakes the entire mountain with a great earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After that, a mighty fire explodes. You think God would be speaking through all of these things, but God is not speaking through these powerful moments. No. After all the displays of God's power are completed, Elijah has absolutely no direction. He's just seen a show, but he's still just as scared. But in the end, when the powerful God was finished performing, showing his strength and his might to The Bible says he showed up in a still, small voice. He said, anoint Haziel and Jehu to be kings of Syria and Israel. Anoint Elisha to be the next prophet. They will destroy what you are running from. And by the way, I've got 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed down to the false god Baal. As you have suggested, you are not the only one serving me. Now, why would God choose to work through a still, small voice? How do you hear from a God that is so big that it should be so simple, but it's not? There are two reasons today before we close. Number one, Elijah thought he needed God's power to defeat evil, but God showed him it was not a power deficit that you have. It was a direction deficit. Sometimes we can't see God's power due to our lack of listening for direction. God revealed he has all power. But that's not what we're missing here, Elijah. Hear me, church family. We're not missing the power of God. Jesus' name. We are not lacking in the power department. We have all power over the enemy, over the darkness. Uh, We can create earthquakes, fire, and wind can blow rocks. Uh, We have access to power. The problem is not the power. The problem is not the God of power. The problem is the disconnect between the people of God and the God of power. God wants to bridge the gap so that we can access this powerful God and get direction for our lives. Number one, the problem is that we think we need more power to win. That's not true. We're not having a problem with power. You've got to make up your mind right now that our God is not weak. It's not a a a power problem. It's not a power deficit. God's got all power. God can do anything. And God simply revealed his power through all of those three signs. But yet God was not in that because God was trying to show him it's not about my power. You need my voice. See, Elijah, he, he wanted the power of God to work. He didn't want the commune with God. He wanted God just to fix everything for him. He didn't want to have to get alone and walk with him. You know, sometimes we get on power trips as prophets and men of God. We don't want to actually spend time with God alone. We just want God to perform and show out and fix everything so we can go back home and have a comfy life. But we've got to get alone with God and speak to God because God wants to talk with us. God wants to deal with us as individuals. God wants to spend time in our presence. Number two reason why. The reason how we can hear a big God is God speaks to us quietly. Why would God do this? God could shout. God could scream it. God could tell you, marry them. Okay, Lord, I'm buying my plane ticket. Here's your job. Here's your spouse. Here's what you're going to do every day. Eat this for breakfast. He could shout it. He could say it. He could just get it all done. But, but God speaks very quietly. Do you know why God speaks quietly? He wants to see if you want to listen. Not everybody deserves the voice of God. The voice of God, you have to walk with him very intimately to hear the voice of God. 
Everybody says they want to hear the voice of God, but very few people get alone with him and turn over all the noise off and say, Lord, speak. We can't hear a big God because our big God doesn't speak big. Our big God speaks quiet. Never have a reference in the, really the, the Bible of Jesus ever walking around shouting everything at people. The Bible does not tell us that. The Bible says he spoke with great authority, but the Bible doesn't tell us that he was a shouting preacher. In fact, the Bible calls him a teacher. I can't imagine him shouting to get people's attention. I just see him just telling people the truth. And if you want to hear, come on. And if you don't, then don't. But I'm not going to raise my voice and force it down your throat. Because if you don't want this, you don't have to have this. I feel like that we can't hear from a big God because we refuse to get alone and turn all the noise off and disconnect from all the things in the world. I dare say God is speaking to you. And you can't even hear him. There are two ways to hear somebody better. This is just common sense. The person can get louder that's talking to you because you refuse to turn off all the noise. They have to. My kid's like, Dad, don't holler. I'm like, turn on your music and I will. (laughs) Whenever things are loud, you have to raise your voice. Think about it, y'all. When you're busy in life and you've got all the noise in your life, everybody's got to yell at you. Well, we don't want to do that, do we? We don't want to have volume to get your attention. A lot of you have PTSD from being yelled at as a child. I've actually heard people say I don't like it when preachers yell because I, it takes me back to childhood where men used to yell at me. And that's why a lot of preachers these days are very soft-spoken and quiet because they come back from a background of yelling and abuse. We don't want to have to raise our voices to get God's attention to you. So what are we going to do then, church family? What's the second way? The second way is you have to turn the noise off. Prove to God that you want more than a demonstration. You just want direction. There's only two ways to hear God, right? He shouts and gets your attention, which that's not in his nature. He's not a violent God. Or you turn all the noise off and you get direction for your life finally. Turn off Facebook. Turn off all of the channels, all the subscriptions and notifications. Put your phone off on silent. Put it away. Get alone. Stop chasing earthquakes. Stop chasing fireball moments. Stop chasing conferences. Stop chasing YouTube preachers and get alone with God. Get alone in the cave and spend time with Jesus. Get alone with God. Do you want to hear the voice of God? Turn off every noise in your life so that God can speak to you. Yes, he speaks to people, but do you want to hear him? Yes, he speaks, but will you get alone? Yes, God will tell you what to do, where to go, and how to act, but you've got to get alone with God. How do you hear the voice of a big God? You've got to turn everything off. He's not going to shout at you. He's not going to shout at you, church family. I wish I could hear God's voice. Then get alone with God. Go on a fast. Turn everything off. He'll speak to you. I dare say he's talking to you right now. But there's so much in your life that has attention, that's pulling at you, that you can't recognize his voice. He said, my sheep know me. My sheep know my voice. He said, my sheep know my voice. How do you know you belong to God? How do you know that you've got a good shepherd? Because you know the voice of the shepherd. You turn everything off. I don't care what they're saying or they're saying or what that says. I just want to hear from you, God. I don't care about any of the other things. I just want to hear from you, God. I just want to hear from the big God. I know you're powerful. I know you can do anything. I just want to hear from you, God. I just want to know your voice. God. You can fix all your problems in one prayer meeting. 
We're living in a day now where people say, I wish these preachers would stop telling everybody to pray through. You need more than that. Did Elijah have more than that? Where was his counselor at? Don't tune me out now. Where was his teacher? Where was his counselor? Where was his $100 an hour session at? One voice from God. One word. All your answers. Y'all, we can keep playing this game where we divert having to have a prayer life if we want to. And we can keep creating avenues to get through life. Or we can learn how to talk to God. And God could give us a way out of every situation that we find ourselves in. I have faced a season in the last few years where I wanted all of my elders, all of the men of God over me to tell me what God was doing. And none of them heard from God from me. Until finally my pastor said, he kind of laughed when I told him. And I said, you know what, can you just get a word from God for me? He laughed and said, I think God's trying to talk to you, son. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want to be in the cave anymore. I don't want to be in the cave. I don't want that. And I know you don't want that. But that's the only way we're going to hear from God. It's the only way we're going to find the king. It's the only way to defeat Jezebel in the darkness is to hear from God. It's to get alone with God and stop wanting a display of his power and a display of miracles. And get alone with him and just hear his voice. So this week we're going to fast. Then we're going to shut some things off. Think we could do a media fast this week? You want me to make you do it? You want me to pull the authority card? I don't want to do that. Let's just choose to do it. Let's just turn it off this week. Can we do that, Lori? Let's just turn it off this week. Let's just get, let's get, in, let's get in the cave for a little while. Let's just hear from God this week. Let's let God give us direction for our lives, for our families. For our finances, every situation we're fighting right now, there is a God, there's an answer, there's a word. We just got to get alone and turn everything off and let's just hear from God. Oh, how he wants to tell us his plan. God has a plan already ready if you just hear from him. He's got a king picked out, you hear me? He's already got a way to defeat Jezebel. He's got every answer you could ever need. You just got to hear from him. You just got to know where to go. I'm done with what the Lord has given me. Always chasing something big. And God's not speaking, but he wants to. He wants to. Before you make your next move in life, what did God say? It doesn't matter if God tells you to it. Just hear from God. You spend so much energy on stressing out if you'd spend the same energy in prayer. You could, in one prayer meeting, one prayer meeting, get every answer you need for what you're facing right now. When will we see the theme through the scripture that God doesn't really want us to have to have a man all the time. He wants to become our priest. He wants to be our king. He wants us to go before him in prayer. We're always looking for somebody to rescue us. He's already rescued us. He's already paved the way. He's already opened the door. We already have a savior. We already have one to talk to. Jesus Let's all stand together today and focus on how we're going to close this time together. In the name of Jesus. How long will we keep living like this, God? Pastor, I need the TV on at night. I can't sleep. You know why you can't sleep? Because all the noise. You're trying to drown it out with more noise. You don't like this, the cold stillness. 
You don't like the cave, I know. But that's where God's going to give you direction. That's where God's going to show you the way that will deliver your family, deliver you from whatever you're in. God's going to do it for us in Jesus' name. There are many people in this place today that the Holy Ghost sent me to tell you that God wants to speak to you. We are so distracted with a world that has a billboard every 50 feet, with ads on every social media outlet, and we're surrounded by all kinds of noise. And God is trying to say, I have a word for you individually. But you've got to get alone with me and let me talk to you. And I will talk to you. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know right now who God is blessing in our church? People that are hearing from God. Nothing special about it. Nothing really special. People that talk to God and hear from God. That's it. Some of you are saying amen, nod in your head, because you know it's true. It's not that advanced. It's not that difficult. It's just that people that hear from God and walk in the Spirit, people know what to do with their problems. People that don't let pride rule the day and they actually get alone and they say, God, just tell me. I don't want to figure it out. I'm going to just tell me. When will we figure it out? We can't do this without a voice from God. We are not those people. We can't do it alone. We have to have God's voice. But if we hear from God, we're going to be just fine. We're going to be victorious. We're going to defeat the enemies coming against us. We don't need an army. We just need to hear from God. Y'all, check it out. God can send down fire. God can cause an earthquake. God can blow all your problems away. But this is a covenant with us. This is both of us together. It's not God just doing all of our work. This is a walk with God. This is a walk with God. It's personal. It's intimate. That's what the Holy Ghost wants to do in us today. Nothing pleases God. Thank you, Brother Craig. Nothing pleases God like one of the members of the church saying, you know what? Enough trying to figure it out with all the noise of the world. I just want to hear from you because if I do, I'm safe. I'm anointed. I'm powerful. I'm victorious. I will make it in Jesus' name. Whatever it takes, God. Whatever cave it takes, God. Whatever loneliness it takes, God. I want to hear from you, God. One word from heaven will change your eternal destiny. One word from heaven will keep you in the fight. One word from God. One word, one word of a direction. Mamas, don't say you love your kids if you won't pray. Men, don't say you'll defend your house if you won't pray. Only God can protect our families. Only God can direct our steps. Who to marry, where to work, what to do. Only God can do it. I don't have the answers. Pastor Green doesn't have the answers. But my God has all of the answers. I will never be smart enough to help anybody, but the God in me can speak and the Spirit in me can work. And all is well. All is well. I want to hear from God. I just want to hear from God. Nobody might could give me a word like I want because God's trying to get me to have a prayer life. Oh, pastor, tell me what's wrong. Oh, no, get a prayer life first. Spiritual leadership is a confirmation for what you're already praying about. I am not God. I'm just a confirmation. There is no substitute for your own walk with God. I don't want just power. I want direction. I just don't want performance. I want revelation. 
If I can't hear from you, I won't make it. If I can't hear from heaven, I won't make it. Come on, every problem you're facing, everything, I don't care what it is or how difficult you're facing right now, one word from God, one word of direction, one mission from heaven, all your problems can be solved. If I just hear from God. God, before you send me a man, send me your word. Oh God, I want to hear from you, Jesus. Oh God, I want to hear your voice. Oh, oh, the last days, God. He that hath an ear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say, saith God. He that hath an ear, let him hear. For God is speaking to his church. God is calling us. God is working in us. Turn out the other voices. Turn them off. Turn them off so God can speak. Still small voice. I want to hear you, Lord. I want to hear you, Lord. Oh, I want to hear you, Lord. Every day I wake up, God, tell me how to act. Tell me what to say. Tell me what to do. I just want to hear from you, God. I don't care about Jezebel. I care about your voice. Oh, how to hear from a big God. He doesn't want to scream at us today. Our God doesn't want to shake us today. He doesn't want to burn us with a fire today. He doesn't want to blow us over like a hurricane. He just wants to whisper. He just wants to whisper. (laughs) I refuse to shout to, to this generation. I refuse to give you a sign. The religious people said, show us a sign. He said, I will not give you a sign, but I will give you my word. I'll give you my word. I'll speak to you. I'll give you direction. Nothing else matters if we can't hear from God. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters for my life. God, I don't want to hear what I want to hear. I want to hear what you're saying. If you listen closely, God will say, arise and go. God will say, arise and act. God will say, arise and go. What is the Spirit saying to you right now? Where is God calling you? What is God calling you to? If you'll listen, God will say, arise and work. Arise and perform. You have a work to do, Elijah. You've got a king to anoint and a prophet to push forward. Oh, God, speak to me. Use me. I dare say when God speaks to you, it's not always about you. But it will affect you. And it will save you. It's about somebody else. It's about your ministry. It's about the kingdom. It's about your brothers and sisters. Oh, speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. Oh, whisper, Lord. I'm all ears. I'm all open, God. I'll make time every day for you, Jesus. I know you're smart, sir, but you'll never be smart enough to defeat the enemy. Just hear from God. Just hear from God. He wants to speak to us. Oh, he's a good God. He's a good God. Huh. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. 
He's a helper in the time of need. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Oh. We treasure the Word of God. We value the Word of God. David said, do I go fight? If you tell me, I'll go. If you tell me, no, I won't. And God said, go. You shall defeat the Philistines. Just need a word, God. Just give me the green light, God. If I know you're with me, I can go. If I know you're speaking, I can go by faith. Fear not your future when God is on your side. Fear not today when God is on your side. Fear not the next step of the journey when God speaks, go! And you shall be victorious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I want to hear from you, Lord. I commit God this week. I commit God to fast. I'm only doing two meals this week, God, as a sacrifice so I can turn out the noise. I commit God to turn off the digital devices in my life. But I'm addicted to seeing all day. If it gets quiet and bored, so be it. I'd rather be in a cave and have direction than a prophet without a word. I refuse to be an apostolic Pentecostal who cannot hear from God. How long will you make it without suicide and depression fighting you? How long can you last being a worshiper without hearing from God? How long can we make it as a people without God speaking to us? I fear not Jezebel. I fear a God with all power not dealing with me. Oh God. I feel the Holy Ghost minister today in this place. It's early still, a few more moments. Uh, let's seek his face. That's Sister Page. go in the name of Jesus, go there, go there. The greatest talent you'll ever have in the kingdom is hearing from God. This is the path you've been on, sister. It's been a dark cave at times, and you've wanted to get out of it. But don't leave until God has given you a word. Dwell there until God has spoken. God's going to make you a prayer warrior above all of the things. God's going to give you the gift of hearing from heaven. It's going to change lives in the course of the church for eternity. In the name of Jesus. Oh, speak, Lord. God, use Sister Bonnie in Jesus' name. Send her forth on the mission field with a word, God. God, use her. Whatever your calling is fully for her in the name of Jesus. If you want to use her as a prophetess, I know she would not care. I know that she would say yes. By the authority of the name of Jesus, God, I loose her to whatever it is that you have for her. She's just getting started. Lord, you've got a great plan for her life. Use her mightily, God. She does not want the credit. She doesn't care about what you tell her. She just wants to be used by you. She just wants to hear from heaven. It's going to be dark times and cave times, Sister Bonnie, but you're going to be an impact for the kingdom as God begins to speak through and use you. Let God use you regardless of your age, regardless of the stage. Let God speak through your sister. Spend lots of time daily with the Lord. And let the Holy Ghost speak through your sister. Oh, God, raise us up.
We're frustrated because we don't spend time in prayer. <laughs> come on, there's a spirit in this place today trying to lift off of us. Doubt has come in because you have not seen God do His power. You're frustrated with Him. It's led you to run. It's led you to question God. But God is not in the fire. God is not in the earthquake. God is not in the wind that blows. God is in the silence. God is in the darkness of the cave. That's where we hear from him. We rise up out of the cave with great power, authority, and anointing. Come on, don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of alone. Turn off social media. Be alone. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to leave you, church family. He's not going to leave you. Oh, He's with you. He's with you in the darkness. He's with you in the valley. Oh, yea, will I fear no evil. For thou preparest the table for me in the presence of my enemies. I can be surrounded by darkness, by devils. But the Lord is with me, yes. The Lord is with me, yes. Even in this journey, even in this darkness, the Lord is with me, yes. I see nobody but the Lord. I see nobody but God. And if I could just hear from the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to win. My family's going to win. The kingdom's going to win. We'll be victorious. Jezebel's going to die. The enemy's going to go. Uh, uh. <laughs> Woo! That's it away the Holy Ghost, sister. Oh, God. Oh, God. Move in us, God. Direct us, God. Oh, speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. I can keep going if you'll talk to me. I can make it if you'll give me direction, God. I'm not mad at Jezebel. I'm just confused, God. Tell me where to go, God. Tell me what to do, Lord.
just want to hear from you, God. Oh, speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. You will give me direction. You will tell me where to go. Tell me what to do. still stands great is your faithfulness never will forget oh thank you Lord yeah dismissed.